Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is paint a radial rainbow design that we're going to print onto later. But before we do that, let's talk about what a radial design is. A radial design is a design which can include any lines, shapes, or colors that starts in the center and radiates outwards in a circular way. This is my radial design printed over my rainbow painting. As you can see, the design starts from the center and radiates out in a circular way. You'll also notice that the radial design is symmetrical. So not only are we creating a radial design, but our design will also have radial symmetry. If I were to draw a vertical line straight down the middle, the left side and right side are symmetrical and have the same design. If I were to draw a horizontal line right to the center, the top and bottom are symmetrical as well and have the same design. Radial symmetry is also known as radial balance. Radial symmetry can be found in nature like this snowflake or in flowers. Mandalas have radial symmetry too. These intricate designs symbolize the universe and are often used in meditation practice. On your 12 inch square paper, write your name and class in the back. Flip it over and find the center of the paper using a ruler. This marks the spot where we're going to start painting. We're painting with liquid watercolors, but you could use watercolor pans like these as well. As you guys know, the rainbow's order is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, then purple. And we're going to paint in that order, but we can add in some pink after the red or purple too for added color if you'd like. Starting with red, paint a small circle where you marked your center. Make sure you clean your brush between colors and squeeze with a paper towel so colors don't mix in the tray. Then paint orange around the red. It's okay if the colors blend a little as you paint. Once you're done, set aside your painting to dry completely. Fold your 6 inch square printer paper into a triangle so it points upward like this. If you have tracing paper, use that instead, but printer paper works fine for this step too. A good way to make sure the paper's edges line up is to have two corners overlap first, then press down the middle with your finger, then press and smooth from the center out on either side. Then draw curving lines starting in the right corner going to the left corner, creating C shapes as you draw. Make sure there's space like this between each line. In between each curving line, draw simple lines and or shapes, but make sure they're not too small or detailed. It could be a pattern of lines and shapes, but it doesn't have to be. Basically, just make sure any shapes you draw aren't too small and the lines aren't drawn too close together. Then open it up, and while it's open, trace over all your lines with a black Sharpie. If you're using tracing paper, however, you can skip this step of using the Sharpie. Now take the bottom half and flip it over. Make sure your paper's edges are lined up when folding. Now we're going to trace over the lines that you can see coming through the paper. Since we used a thin paper, you can see the design underneath. Trace over all the lines and shapes with pencil. Now what you need to do is flip the bottom back up from underneath. You should be able to see your entire design, the back side of the Sharpie part and the side you trace with pencil continuing throughout the entire square paper.
So now that we have our design, the next thing you need to do is to tape it to the styrofoam, which is our printing plate. The styrofoam is cut to 6 inches, the same size as our paper. Put your paper on top of it so the edges line up and put two small pieces of clear tape along the top, like this. You want to be able to open and close the paper, so only tape to the top. Then flip it over and write your name on the back of the styrofoam printing plate with Sharpie. Then flip it over and trace over all your lines with a colored pencil, pressing firmly as you trace. You want to use a dull colored pencil here so it won't tear a hole in the styrofoam. If you do accidentally create a hole in the styrofoam, you can always cover it with tape on the back. It's not a big deal, but try not to. As you trace over your lines, you'll see that it transfers onto the printing plate. You'll also notice as you trace that it might tear your paper here and there, but that's totally fine. It's not going to affect your print at all. You won't see your colored pencil lines where you draw over any tape, but that's okay. It will still transfer your drawing. Just make sure you press hard over that area where there's tape. Once that's done and you can see all your lines clearly enough, you need to flip the paper over and trace over all your lines a second time, just on the styrofoam, using your colored pencil again. Don't forget to make sure you're pressing firmly as you trace. The next step is to fill in some of your shapes you created in your design. Wherever you fill in a shape, it will reveal more colors from your rainbow in your painting that you created. You don't need to fill in as many shapes as I am here. You can fill in as many or as little as you like. This next step is very important. Now that you've transferred your design to the printing plate, you need to flip it over, and where you started drawing your curving lines in the right corner, you need to mark the back of that corner by drawing an arrow using a Sharpie. It's important to draw a long arrow so we can see it throughout the printing process. You'll see what I mean in just a little bit. Then flip it back over and take off your paper. Okay, so now that I've got my arrow and my name on the back of my printing plate in Sharpie, the next step is to print. Before we print our design on the rainbow painting, we're going to do a practice print first on white paper. Printing this way with paint can be tricky, so it's a good idea to print on a practice sheet first just to get a sense of how much paint you'll need. Make sure your name is on the back of your practice paper first. Then flip it over. Then you're going to take a brayer and some paint on a plate and roll it into the black paint onto the plate a bit. The temper paint has a slippery texture so the wheel on the brayer won't move easily so you need to roll it into a large sheet of scrap paper to get the paint evenly distributed on your brayer and this step also helps take off any extra paint you don't need. Once you've rolled it a few times onto the side of the paper, you're going to roll it onto your printing plate. You want a nice, even amount of black paint and for all the white areas to be covered. Then turn it over carefully and line up your arrow so it points towards the center of your painting as you line up the edges. The arrow is going to help us figure out what direction the printing plate needs to be in in order to create our radial design that's symmetrical. Press with your hand and then use your clean brayer without any paint on it. 
to roll over the entire back side. You want to press firmly as you roll. Once you've rolled over it a few times, then lift it off, and this action of lifting it off is called pulling a print. And you'll notice right about here is where I probably added a little too much paint, but that's why we're creating a practice print first. Then you need to roll your brayer into the paint again, then into the paper again, then onto your printing plate again, and print repeating these steps as you rotate your printing plate, making sure you always have your arrow pointing to the center. You'll need to print like this four times in total to complete the symmetrical radial design print, filling in the entire white paper to complete the design. Now you just need to repeat those steps on your rainbow paper.